See Thursday. We're back at Democracy Plaza, and we want to remind you it's not just the presidency that's at stake tonight. It is also control of the United States Senate and the House of Representatives. Democrats at the outset of this campaign had hoped to regain the Senate. They have picked up a seat tonight based on our projections. One of the new stars in the uh, Democratic Party, we're going to show you in the state of Illinois. He was an electrifying uh, speaker uh, at the Democratic Convention, Barack Obama. Uh, we'll be hearing a lot more from Barack Obama in the course of the next several years. In Alabama, no surprise there, Richard Shelby, an outspoken member of the Republican Party going back to the United States Senate. In uh, the state of Connecticut, another old Democratic war horse, war horse, Chris Dodd, closest friend of Senator Edward Kennedy, going back, a seat that his father once held. Barbara Mikulski, Democrat in the state of Maryland, being returned. Kit Bond, the incumbent in Missouri, being reelected by his fellow Missourians. And in New Hampshire, Judd Gregg, the incumbent, he has been reelected. So one pickup in that run for the Democrats, but they appear to be in some trouble in some other states. These are the electoral votes as we have them at this hour. John Kerry, 77, to George Bush's 66. The states filled in red for the president and blue for John Kerry. We're going to go to Tampa now. And one of the boy wonders of the Republican Party, although he's getting almost to, a, to an advanced age for us to call him a boy wonder, even though his appearance will always belie his age, and that's Ralph Reed. Mr. Reed, let me ask you, first of all, I can't hear anything. <laughs> can you hear me? We got a problem. Can you hear me now, Ralph? I can't hear anything. I think we will get back to him in a moment. You could hear the static bleeding through there. Um, Looking at those Senate races and what's to come later tonight, uh, it doesn't appear that the Democrats are going to be able to get where they had hoped to before the night was out. Republicans ran a very smart senatorial campaign. There are 51 Republicans, Tom, and we had uh, 48 Democrats, one independent. The Democrats had to clearly win some seats. The Zeller Miller seat is gone. That's now Republican. Barack Obama does pick up Illinois. But there are a lot of other contested seats in North Carolina and South Carolina, which will be tough for the Democrats to hold on to. We'll see those results pretty soon. Uh, most everyone I talk to all day long believes that the Republicans may gain a seat or may stay even. The Democrats' dream, of course, is to have a 50-50 Senate. Elect John Kerry and John Edwards president and vice president, and John Edwards would break that tie and organize in favor of the Democrats. All right, let's go to uh, NBC's Campbell Brown now because there are governor's races out there as well tonight, Tim, and Campbell's got some results for us on that. Campbell? That's right, Tom. There are 11 gubernatorial elections being held tonight. About six of those are toss-ups, and we are able to project winners in a couple of states, beginning with North Carolina. The Democratic governor, we are projecting Mike Easley, will go on to a second term, defeating his challenger, Republican State Senator Patrick Ballantyne. North Carolina, a conservative state, but Easley had gotten high marks from voters there for uh, bringing up test scores in public schools and improving the economy overall. So again, he will go on to a second term, Mike Easley. In the second state, Tom, West Virginia, again, we are calling it for the Democrat. Secretary of State Joe Manchin projected to win there again, defeating his Republican opponent, Monty Warner. This had been a state where Republicans had high hope, but the Republican in this case not able to really gain any traction. Again, that state going to the Democrat. There are many other states where the polls have closed already, Vermont, Indiana, Delaware. New Hampshire and Missouri, but in all of those cases, it's either too early or too close to call, so we will keep watching. Tom? All right, thanks very much, NBC's Campbell Brown, who appears to be in her ice skating outfit, so once the evening is over, she can get back down on the ice here for us uh, tonight. Uh, Tim, we don't know the size of the turnout, but that may be critical before this night is out how large a mass of new voters decided to get involved this time. Republicans uh, had hoped it'd be 110 million uh, based on 105 showing up in 2000, increased population. Democrats were dreaming about 120 million or more. But Tom, what we keep going back to, looking at some of these, what, what voters told us as they were leaving, leaving the voting booths, in Ohio, uh, voters under the age of 30, 60% for John Kerry in Florida. Under the age of 30, 63% for John Kerry. We don't know how many of those there are, but clearly, if the young voters are turning out in significant numbers, it's extremely good news. Also, the swing independent voters in Ohio and Florida, Kerry breaking 60. Again, how many are there? How many of those are new registrants? 
And how does that compare to the strong Republican base of George Bush and the strong Democratic base of John Kerry? Let's uh, catch up with NBC's David Gregory now, who's at the White House where the President and Mrs. Bush are on the phone, I would guess, a lot tonight and probably watching some returns as well. David? They are, Tom. You can get a sense of the, the scene here tonight. There's something like between 30 and 35 guests that they have in the residence. Uh, and they've got monitors up. They've got a large buffet dinner. And uh, I've even got detail on the menu, which I'll spare you for the moment. But if you can imagine this, Karl Rove, who uh, the president doesn't want to let very far away from him, is set up in the old family dining room to track results. He shuttles between there and over in the Roosevelt Room in the West Wing, where they've got a command center uh, set up. The president has been on the phone uh, with strategists and his campaign manager in Arlington, Virginia, at their campaign headquarters. Uh, in addition, talking to his brother Jeb down uh, in Florida to track those results as well. So. Uh, this follows a day, and Kelly O'Donnell talked about the efforts of Senator Kerry to campaign to the last moment. I mean, the president going to Columbus, Ohio today, he even got at the, on the phone at some point had to convince voters it was really him on the phone, trying to get him out to vote. And they had set up in Ohio, they were keeping us on Air Force One today so that he could do a series of satellite interviews like Senator Kerry has been doing with Florida stations. But in the Ohio rain, even with a cable strung up to the satellite truck off the side of Air Force One, the rain caused uh, technical difficulties. They had to cancel those interviews. Tom? All right. Thanks very much, NBC. David Gregory, that's one of the few times when the electronic wizardry of Air Force One and the White House uh, have, uh, may have failed the president today as he tried to get in some final licks in the state of Florida. So uh, here's where we stand now on the electoral map. Uh, just before we uh, tell you, we'll be going away in a moment. Uh, John Kerry, 77. George Bush, 66. Some surprises there, uh, South and North Carolina, Virginia, we still can't make a call there. Ohio, obviously, and Florida, uh, the two big states, uh, part of the trifecta with Pennsylvania in the Eastern Time Zone. Back with more from Democracy Plaza, decision 2004 in a moment. Half the states in America now have closed their polls. The decisions have been made by voters representing 269 electoral votes. And there are some surprises out there, in addition to the ones that we had anticipated. We're going to begin, first of all, and show you a three-way board in the state of Florida. This is the raw vote. Now 23% of the vote has been counted there. Uh, George Bush has a commanding lead in that raw vote. But it really depends on where these votes come from, we have to tell you again and again. Ralph Nader seems not to be much of a factor as he was last time in Florida, but of course uh, we know that Miami comes in later and West Palm Beach comes in later. Uh, we're going to call. That's important, but Tom, because in 2000 Nader got 90,000 votes, right? And he's only tracking about 30,000 now. Yeah, right. So the state of Virginia, 29% of the people, 29% uh, of the precincts have been counted thus far. Again. Uh, the same caveat, we don't know where those votes are. We do have a winner now in the state of North Carolina. Uh, big sigh of relief and probably a cheer in the living quarters of the White House. George Bush is the winner of the 15 electoral votes in North Carolina, the home state of John Edwards. He was unable to carry that. Not many people thought that he would, but they thought it was maybe a little bit like drawing to an inside straight that they had uh, a slim chance at best. So that's the map as we see it at this point. The map still is filling in about how we expected it to. Republicans thought maybe they could get New Jersey. They did not. Democrats had hoped maybe they could get West Virginia back this time. They did not. So we keep coming back to those same states, Tim. Ohio, 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 Florida, Florida, Florida. You know, North Carolina, Virginia, they're enticing, Tom. Bill Clinton always wanted to win Virginia. He came within four points one time, two points another time. But they always keep moving the football. And the Democrats, I think, rather wisely decided, let's not spend a lot of money and time. Let's focus on Ohio and Florida. And that's why those states are deadlocked tonight. And we, we don't want to leave out now the other states as we move west that are battleground states. You move to the upper Midwest, uh, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Iowa. Iowa is a field of dreams for both candidates this time. Absolutely right, Tom. And those are the states that are still very much in play. As you look, look at them right here, 53 electoral votes. 56 for Bush, 53 for Kerry. These are the ones that can be contested, if you will. And, is, and once one of these candidates wins one of their opponent states, you take it off the board, 
it really does start to lock that electoral college door. Uh, Tim, we're going to find out in uh, a few moments what happens in Bill Clinton's old home state of Arkansas. He came off his post-operative bed, as it were, went off and campaigned, and Arkansas will be closing its polls in about eight minutes. We'll be back with more from Democracy Plaza, Decision 2004.